Today we're going to be talking about the four critical guidelines to launching your business and your life. Come on in, Sam. Following these steps in this guideline will give you that secret ingredient. Just come on over here. Uh, following these steps will give you that secret ingredient, that special sauce that you need uh, to finally push yourself to levels of success that before you could only dream about. These four guidelines will help you make become more successful quicker than you thought was possible. So the four guidelines, the four things that you, ways that you're going to make launch your practice your life. And again, I always talk about a Cairo launch. I talk about launching. I talk about things happening quickly and easily. Uh, and the way you do that is number one, by having a long-term vision. Number two, by prioritizing today, the things that you need to do today. Number three, by being your true self, which I know this kid has no trouble doing. Uh, she is a, a unique individual and I love having her around. Uh, and number four is finding your happiness. Those are our four tips. Mm -hmm. Now, again, these four guidelines I'm going to give you today are four guidelines that are going to become a theme of the show. And we're going to develop uh, each one even further. Today, again, I'm giving you those guidelines. So let's get to the first one. Uh, the first one is uh, having a long-term vision. And that may sound simple, and it is. Uh, you have to just sit down and take the time. Running a business or improving yourself can take time. It won't always happy over, happen overnight, but I'm here to tell you it can happen a lot faster than you think it could or it has for you in the past if you follow these four guidelines. So number one, uh, you need to commit to the process. You need to set goals of where you want to be, in my opinion, two, three, or four years down the line. Uh, those two, three-year goals are very, very important, uh, but I want to address that here in a second. And I need you to be specific about those goals. Don't be vague because you're, if you're vague about your goals, you're only doing yourself a disservice. Now, these goals don't have to be set in stone. I've said that several times. These goals are, are moving objects. When you set a goal and you start moving towards it, sometimes you realize that that's not even what you wanted in the first place, but you're at least in motion, which is really cool. Um, and that goal might change on you, and, and that's fine. But it does need to be a, a, a vision, a target that you have that you're actually working um, towards. Now, I said the two or three year goal, uh, but to me, that's anywhere from four to six launches, uh, meaning you don't move in a steady line upwards. Uh, any business that I've evaluated has never had a, a growth line that just went like this. It's always jump, hang out for a little while, jump, hang out for a little while. So when I say a two or three year goal with your business or your life or any project that you want to, to me, that is several launches, several big jumps in order to get there. So I want you to set a two to three year vision, but I also want you to set a four to six month launch, four to six month jump goal, four to six month quick hit, I know I can get there. And I'm here to tell you that if you sit down and write your two to three year goals with what you think is realistic, those should probably be your four to six month goals. Those are probably what you can accomplish in that period of time if you focus properly and you follow these four essential guidelines. You could astonish yourself about what you're capable of four to six months with the focus and these guidelines. Uh, and then your two to three year goals obviously can expand from that point forward. I would think that your two to three year goals, what you might think of as realistic, could be done in four to six months. And your two to three year goals, if you showed them to somebody, I'd want people to say you're crazy. There's no way that's possible. Uh, and that's the way your two to three year goals should look. They should be possible. And again, obviously, not everything is possible. I'm not that guy that's like, oh, you can do anything you want in the world because there are limits to what you're, you're capable of achieving, but they're, they're far greater than what you think they are. So first guideline is to have a vision for the future. Uh, two to three years set goal and then a four to six month jump or launch goal. Go ahead and set that down. Now that you have that vision for the future in place, you need to prioritize for today. I know it seems to be a uh, lock up there, but we've got it in other places, so we're okay. Uh, you have to have prioritized for today. When you start to look at where you want to be, look at where you are right now. And I talked about this uh, last week as far as having fear. You need to take stock. So dumb it. You need to take stock of your potential challenges and some of the issues that may come up along the way, but don't get too focused on those. One of the biggest problems in attempting a launch is not from a lack of strategy. It's not from a lack of, of you know, having plans. Too many people want to plan everything out too much 
it's not a lack of strategy that's stopping you from getting there. Uh, again, most people overthink things. It's from a lack of your mindset. The, what stops most people is having a fear of doing the one thing that you know you should do. Having a fear of doing the, the thing that you've already got listed. You've got these steps doing, but you're afraid to do them because you don't know what's going to happen next. You're overthinking what might happen next. So what I'm going to tell you is do, what's that? You overthink things? You always tell me that. You get ahead of yourself. I, you're the opposite. You're already already out there. You're already <laughs> taking too many steps. Uh, so just think about your next step and work on it now. Work on today's priority. Taking that one step, that next step, whatever it is, will often light up the steps, you know, one step or two steps further. Uh, and sometimes taking that next step will cause chaos. Do not be afraid of that. That chaos is a good thing. That chaos might cause what we would think of as problems, but those are problems that you have to face and you have to flip them into your own assets and they're problems that will help you get to your, your end goals. Uh, so I just saw a story on Facebook the other day about The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Uh, I was just saying, you know, how obviously his goal was to uh, to make it to the NFL after he came out of playing football in Miami. You've probably seen the little Facebook documentary, I guess you call it. Uh, you know, and he took, he thinks about what would have happened if he had made the NFL uh, and where he is now. And obviously he took something that was at the time depressing to him and turned it into a positive. Uh, those things happen when you're after a goal. So he was seeking a goal. He didn't quite get there, but something else showed up. And when you're in motion, magical things happen. So I'm telling you to uh, uh, get yourself moving. Prioritize today. Decide what you need to do today to get towards that goal and do those things. Take that small step. Other things will open up. When you start moving forward and you look backwards, you're going to realize that you've made a lot of progress, uh, even though, again, you were afraid to take that step because you didn't know if you are going there. So number three, the third essential guideline to launching your business in your life. Yeah, we got thumbs up and hearts uh, is to be yourself. You don't have any trouble with that one, do you? No. no. Don't focus on technique. Stop overthinking the details like I just talked about. Instead, stop looking at... You should look at other people's success as far as, you know, what what they've done and what has worked for them. You should have a mentor. You should have people to follow. But accept what makes you unique. Think hard about what makes you special. And then focus all of that talent into reaching your goals, not somebody else's goals. I say that because, again, in my conversation yesterday, I told you I'm attracting the right kind of people for my coaching program. Uh, two of the docs that I talked to were just saying that every other coach that they've worked with, you know, have this way. They have this, here's this manual. Here's the way I did things in practice. Here's what made me successful. If you do this, you'll be successful too. And they started doing those things, but they weren't them. And they, they, they didn't have, they didn't resonate with that. And therefore, they didn't get great results. And I see that a lot in a lot of the coaching programs. And again, almost every coaching program has a lot of value. And some people get, some coaching programs try to make every doctor the same within that program. And only the people that resonate with that concept are going to excel. Other ones are just going to fall behind because they're not resonating. Uh, I'm telling you to find that uniqueness. That's what I love about my coaching programs because I work with every doctor individually to find out what they love doing, what makes them happy, which is the next uh, guideline. And I try to use that. I try to focus on their strengths as opposed to making them do things that they're uncomfortable with. So uh, third guideline is to find that uniqueness that, and focus it into a brand, your brand, that sets you apart from the pack. As I'm saying this, I'm thinking about that movie. Um, it's got Owen Wilson in it. Uh, Kate Hudson, Matt Dillon, uh, Lance Armstrong's in it. Uh, you, you, me, and Dupree. If you've seen that one, I believe that's it, uh, where he, he becomes a motivational speaker, speaker trying, about, trying to find your ness. What is your ness? What makes you special? Um, that's what you need to do. That's, that's uh, guideline number three. Not stolen from Owen Wilson, uh, but find what makes you unique. Find your ness. If you do that, you'll be more memorable. People kind of gravitate towards that authenticity. If you just be yourself as opposed to trying to be someone else. And again, I hear you know guys selling scripts all the time and, and another doctor tries to use that script and it just doesn't work for them because they're not being authentic. They're not being themselves. So be yourself in every sense of that phrase and success will find you. I guarantee you that. Let's get on to the fourth guideline for launching your business in your life. Uh, and that fourth guideline is happiness. 
Uh, and this is perhaps the easiest guideline to understand, but the hardest one for us to live. Uh, and if you were here when Samantha showed up and she said, that's easy for me. Uh, yes, for a seven-year-old, it's, it's easy to find that happiness. For a seven-year-old, uh, even if she does something wrong and I have to tell her to stop doing those things, she might get sad for a second, but then it's like she forgets and she's on to being happy. We, as adults, uh, unfortunately, tend to lose some of that happiness. We tend to focus on our mistakes. We tend to focus on some negativity. We focus on those bad things that have happened to us, uh, and we don't put enough energy into creating happiness. And I know I talked about it last week in the uh, Minimize Stuff, Maximize Happiness uh, show as well. Happiness, I think, should be your end goal at all times. Uh, you know, we strive and push, and, and, and trust me, I, I've, uh, I strived and I pushed when I was younger as well. And I, I don't know if it, I'm not going to say it's wisdom because I, I know I still make a lot of stupid young mistakes. Uh, but I've come to realize that, that, that striving really pushing to a point of not being able to enjoy the things that you're, you're after in the first place doesn't do you any good. Uh, I see docs all the time that do very, very well and they're striving to buy a new car and they get that and then they go buy a new boat uh, and they never even enjoy the things that they have. I prefer uh, striving for that happiness, uh, providing great value to people that makes me happy, fulfills me. I highly recommend you do the same. Uh, you know, If you're working toward a goal that you hate, if you have to do things that you hate in order to get to that goal that you hate, chances are that once you get to that goal, you're still going to hate it. Uh, even if you have something that you truly think you want and you're striving to get it, but you're doing things you hate along the way, is it really worth it? You need to get uncomfortable a little bit. Uh, that time has to happen, but those should still be doing things towards happiness for you. Find the things that make you happy and then absorb those things into your routine. Make sure they're part of your routine. Uh, even if you do have to do a task you don't like, put something about happiness in there. Give yourself a reward at the end of it, something. Make happiness a priority, and productivity and success will automatically follow. Waking up every morning dreading the task that you have to do is not worth it. You got my finger point going down it? Uh, now, again, that, that doesn't go towards, uh, if you want to wake up and play video games all day, and that makes you happy, probably not going to get you productive and, and uh, successful. So, four guidelines. Long-term vision. Uh, prioritize today, find your niss, be yourself, find out what makes you happy, three. And number four, spend more time in happiness. Focus on your happiness. Stop striving towards things that are unnecessary. Strive towards things that, that give you the, the best joy. These guidelines are not a definitive list by any chance, but they will absolutely change your life and your business for the better. So quit making life any harder than it needs to be. Concentrate on making each day the best day possible. Build your own fail-safes, if you will, in your routine uh, so that you have an opportunity to make some mistakes and still bounce back, and you're going to get there. Success is right around the corner. You just need to walk over there and grab it. Right, baby? Thank you for watching this day edition of Coffee with Dr. Scott. I will see you then.